Ah, this is... possibly the best day of the year for me each year. And it came a week early this year where I'm planting chestnuts that I gathered last fall from the Miracle Sisters chestnut tree. And I'm putting them into pots. I've already done four. This is a very special one. It's the last one of the season that I found when I thought the season was over. A couple days later, I found this big beauty. Before I pot it, I wanted to talk for a second about this beautiful little green beauty right here. That's not a chestnut tree. That is a wild sweet cherry. I had the great fortune a few years ago of finding a wild sweet cherry tree along my daily journeys with my bicycle. And ever since I found that tree, I've been trying to sprout those stones from those cherries. It's been wildly, pardon the pun, difficult. And out of who knows, maybe a hundred of those cherries, I managed to sprout a handful. And out of that handful, right here in the pot beside it, this is a dead one, a wilted one. One of them has survived and thrived. The reason that they are so difficult to grow, to sprout these wild sweet cherries is because, hmm, this is interesting. I didn't think of this until just now. It's exacerbated by the problems in nature, you can't tell because I'm sitting here in this spot, but I'm pointing at my forest through this beautiful glass that's providing us with this sunshine here. The problems with nature that we have caused mean that the birds are eating the cherries before they fully develop. And so I am racing against them, just like I do with these chestnuts to try to find them. Just watch some of my earlier chestnut videos to find out what I'm talking about. When I'm competing with rodents to find these, it's because their food supplies are dwindling ever more and more because of us destroying their habitat and destroying their species with all of the introduced pests. And of course, our wonderful predisposition to destroy all the apex predators, which means if you understand these things, I don't need to finish that sentence. And if you don't, you're probably watching, watching the wrong video right now. At any rate, it's very difficult to sprout one of those wild cherries because they aren't allowed to develop fully. And if I just let the birds pick them all, then I'm not going to get any. And so it's very difficult to take a, an, a seed that wasn't fully developed and then bring it to maturity. And so I'm so, so happy to see this beautiful little cherry tree. So happy here in early February, and I'm going to just keep it growing and growing. And soon it's going to have a home out there. I'm still trying to sprout some more. 
but at least I've got the one now. And one other note about this on a personal level is that these cherry seeds sprouted the day after my father died. And it almost seems like the universe was sending me a message. Some of his energy is in this, especially because I grew up on a family farm and my father introduced me to the beauty of growing trees and he grew many sweet cherry trees. They were not wild, of course. That's a very, very rare tree right there. A lot of people don't even know that they exist. A lot of scholars in the realm of trees. So I'm very, very, very happy about this and on so many levels. And I wish that he was alive to see this. So on to the chestnut. I've got this beauty right here that I need to get out of the jar. I'm going to hold this here in the light so that, see that white stripe right there? That is the, this is the actual chestnut up here and it's sprouting down into this media. So I need to liberate it from that without harming it. So I'm going to be topping it up with this water, but I'm going to move the camera so that you can see what I'm doing. So I will be saying farewell in terms of head and shoulders, and you're going to see what I'm doing now. Here's some water. And I'm just going to swirl that around a little bit. I'll dump this out and I'm going to do it again. I want to very gently loosen that up. It's quite dense, tightly packed because it's been sitting for a few months in the refrigerator and I had moistened it initially because we don't want it to dry out. There we go. Get my finger right in there. But still very gentle. There it is, it's come loose now. Let me pour some of this out. Oh, there's our beauty. It's got a nice long root on it. The material that I'm using is basically sawdust from red pine, from my forest, of course. And that acts as a, oh, there you go. How beautiful is that? I don't know if you can see that little nib right there. That is the beginning of the tree coming up. This is the main root going down and that little nib is actually going to go up and that's going to become this leader right here. That's the beginning of the leader. Okay, it's time to plant it. Now, I just filled this pot so the soil is nice and loose. This is beautiful soil from the forest. Now, my goal is Get this so that it's resting on that bottom part, which has already planted itself. And I don't know, if it's probably too late to show you, but those are new rootlets, I guess, for lack of a better word, the roots that are growing off of the main root. So this is very nice to see. It's getting a good start. 
one of the others that I planted yesterday, the other four, was bushy with roots. I really should have shown you that as well, but that was a serious planting day and I didn't feel like dragging out the camera. So it's sitting nicely here on top, the actual nut. I'm not compacting it too much yet, just getting some in there so I can top it up with water to help that to drape the root with soil because air pockets are our enemy. And you can see that it's just, the water is almost sitting there because this is such sandy soil. It's so loose. So I'm just going to help it get in there. This is going to take more time than we should allot in this video. So that's, that's a good start. I'm going to put some more water on there. It'll get in there. And then I will top it up with more soil after this gets swallowed up, absorbed. And that little bump is soon going to develop and grow upward. And before you know it, there'll be leaves growing on this. This is a very, very exciting time for me, especially because I'm concerned that this could be the first year that the Miracle Sisters chestnut is alone when it comes time for pollination. I don't think that the grandmother chestnut tree survives this winter. We'll see, I hope she can. I'm concerned that this could be my last crop of American chestnuts for as much as 20 years until these babies, not these ones, but the ones that are already out in the forest growing are big enough to provide flowers and pollen to cross-pollinate with the Miracle Sisters again. So let's hope, as I turn this into the sun, that these babies will grow big and beautiful and help to carry on this very endangered species on the brink of extinction. Speaking of which, I have this pamphlet here from the Canadian Chestnut Council showing a picture of a chestnut tree as they used to be. Can you see that man with his arms spread out? Hopefully this will get that big one day.